Welcome to Cars Plus. Today we're going to talk to you about Graham's Spirit of Motion in cars from 38 to 1940. In particular, the cars that people call shark noses. But what we're going to talk to you about that is different is we're going to cover the various convertibles that were constructed back in the day when the original car was made by Graham. We're also going to show you a number of their brochures, things they proposed, as well as do a major myth buster that you want to stay for at the end of the video so you can see that something that has been represented one way is in fact not true. discussion of Graham convertibles really necessitates discussing the other body styles that came out from Graham. In this case, we have the Graham for 1938 brochure. This is the introduction brochure that would have been out in the fall of 1937. We're going to look at the body styles offered in 1938 by Graham first. When we open the brochure, you can see that they particularly make it prominent that they have a four-door sedan. The four-door sedan would have been the most popular single style of car back in the 1930s that people would have purchased, hence why it is the featured item. However, you'll also see down here is a two-door coupe. To everyone's knowledge, this car was never constructed. Now let's move on and see what was done in 1939. Here we have the 1939 Graham brochure. This would be the fall of 1938. Completely different front from the 38 brochure. Now we're going to show you what's inside of this one. Here we have two new body styles that have been added in 1939. We have the 1939 combination coupe. There are a number of these around. We have one. And at this point in the video, Trish will probably put a little thing up above where you can click on it to watch a video on our Graham combination coupe explaining how the company constructed that car. They also had the 1939 two-door sedan. They do exist. We actually own one. One of these days we will show you the two-door sedan. It's in need of a lot of help at the moment. One other thing you'll notice here is this particular picture shows the front folding seat. This seat is used in both the combination coupe and the two-door sedan. And it will figure later on in this video when we do a Mythbuster portion. Here we have the excellent book by Michael Keller the Graham Legacy Graham Page from 1932. The reason we bring that up is to show you something that is of great importance and this has to do ultimately with the convertibles. Down here on the bottom of this page in the Spirit of Motion chapter, we're on page 91, Graham won unexpectedly, as far as they were concerned, the Paris Concours d'Elegance Le Prix de Avant-Garde at Lyon, Le Prix de Elegance at Bordeaux, and the Grand Prix de Honor at Deauville. But in other words, they've won four Concours de Elegance for the Spirit of Motion cars. This will explain, as we go through many of the convertibles, why they were actually so popular in Europe. The first custom convertibles we're going to cover are those that were done by Jacques Sautchik. Now again, I may not be saying that the best way. He was a Jewish immigrant to France, had been involved in cabinet making previously, and designed a number of very flamboyant cars back in the day. Here we have a 1938 Graham car that he did. Not only is it highly customized as a convertible, but it also has doors that actually come out and slide back against the body. So it has a very unique opening door. Now we're going to show you a couple of pictures off the internet that show you the car restored. A few years ago it was available on eBay. At that time they wanted $100,000 for it in need of total restoration. I do not know if the owner paid that much. I do know that it got restored and shown at Pebble Beach and it is a gorgeous car. One of the true real convertibles made back in the day and according to Mike Keller's research, there were at least two of them. There may in fact have been three. And we'll show you the photo now that depicts the one that may be the third of three. We do know there were two according to Mike Keller's research. 
Henri Chaprone ran a Curacer in France also. The car you're seeing pictured here is in fact a series of customs he did in 1939 for Spirit and Motion cars that were convertibles. The actual number produced is not known, obviously probably not very large. On the other hand, at least one of these has survived. And now we'll show you a model that was produced recently in the modern world that shows you the car that we do know survives in Power Blue. PJ Pinnock and Zonin of the Netherlands also produce cabriolets on the Spirit of Motion chassis. In their catalog, they illustrated this particular car. In the catalog, it would look much fancier than the shot we've got. They did a unique thing. They produced both in supercharged and non-supercharged versions. Exact production numbers are again unknown, but definitely the car was constructed as we have a real shot of one with the top up. Next we have Vesters and Nyrink from Belgium. And again, I may not be pronouncing these names correctly. This was a Carousier in Belgium and you're seeing the rendition of the car they produced as a Graham Cabriolet, or in other words, convertible. And now we're going to show you Graham Supercharger News from back in the day, a real newspaper type advertisement that they sent out to their dealers. They'll show you a real shot from the Motor Show back then of that actual car. Here we have a copy an original real copy of Graham Supercharger News from May of 1939. And it's interesting not just for what we're going to show you in a moment, but as a complete piece of history and reading everything in it, you can learn some very interesting items at the time. Here we have a shot from the Brussels Auto Show in 1939 in Belgium showing you the Vesters and Nierik convertible cabriolet front and center on the display by the Brussels dealership. In 1938, the Swiss coach builder Tuscher of Zurich, Switzerland did this particular convertible. And again, I may be saying the name incorrectly. Here we have the Villers Graham, which was done by Coachcraft Limited in the UK. This particular car, although not truly a convertible, is an open top car, pretty wild in design. And as I said, not a convertible, an open top car, so we thought we should show it to you also. The car you're going to see pictured in a series of photographs here from 16 to 20 years ago at Barrett-Jackson is a very beautiful car in person. This is a 1940 Graham convertible. This car was represented at the time by Hyman Limited, I believe, and it represented as being a factory prototype. Now, it had been restored to this point by Ray Wavell of the Graham Club. He never said it was a factory prototype. In fact, what he said it was, was a car he bought that had been turned into a convertible. I don't think he knows the exact date it was turned into a convertible, sometime after 1940, probably sometime after World War II. What it is, is a four-door sedan that has had the top chopped off of it and the rear door is welded shut, as well as a series of modifications to the back of the car. The windshield, of course, was removed and a different windshield, possibly made up custom for the car, was added. Now we can tell it's a 1940 by the front grille, the front grille being more vertical and of different design than the 38-39 grills. As you look throughout the pictures of the car, you'll find out it is, as I said, very beautiful. There's a pretty easy way to tell it can't be a factory prototype. Since it cut, cut down from a sedan, the front doors are used as the only doors into the car. It's impossible according to Ray, to get in the back seat without crawling over the front seat. A factory would not create a factory prototype like that. And by going and looking at a few things, including our two cars here, a combination coupe and the four-door sedan, we're about to show you why we know Graham would have made the car from a combination coupe and not from a four-door sedan if it were a factory prototype. Here we have the 1940 Graham brochure. And you can see on the cover, they're already pushing the Hollywood. Now we're going to show you something inside the brochure that's of interest to us disproving 
that that green car you saw was a factory prototype. There are actually four body styles depicted, but we're really interested in the top two, so we're not worried about the sedan or the two-door sedan on the bottom. The very top, you can see Graham was depicting a convertible coupe. You'll notice that the windshield is cut down. So this is the sedan body windshield cut down that was very common at the time for automakers to do it that way. You'll also notice this chrome frame and vent window. Well, if you look, they match the chrome frame and vent window on the combination coupe directly below it. Furthermore, if you look at the door lengths, and although they're illustrations, you look at the door length here, it's long, just like it is on the combination coupe. You look at this rear quarter section, it's long, just like it is on the combination coupe. It is quite apparent that if Graham were going to have made a convertible coupe in 1940, they were making out of the combination coupe body. And when we take you out and show you the combination coupe folding seat and denote it, you will understand why it would have been made out of that body. And we'll also show you the sedan and show you why there is no way the factory would ever have made a convertible with sedan front doors where you couldn't get in the back seat. Here we have what really is a homemade book, but is a book that a man by the name of Jim Williams, who used to be a member of the Graham Club. Jim was quite an expert on these cars, having owned quite a number of them and been very much enamored by them. And so he compiled a book on them. Actually, this is volume two, and 1938 volume also. He does everything from his observations and knowledge to things like how the salesmen were taught, uh, colors that existed, options that existed, as well as what it used to look like to buy parts and information on how to restore or take care of the cars or certain systems, etc. It's quite an interesting book to have. And unfortunately, Jim has passed away, so you can't get the book anymore. And furthermore, we can't ask Jim questions, but we can show you something real interesting in the book. Here we have in the relative front of the book, Jim wrote of the cars he was familiar with that had survived. And you'll see the 1940 convertible coupe, same as in brochure, we've shown you the brochure. He says he knew of only one, and it was offered for sale in Motor Trend in the 1950s, in rough shape for $225. We don't have a picture, so do we know it was the car? from the brochure, or is it the car that we're showing you that Ray restored? Here we have a shot, obviously a photocopy, from Jim's book, showing the one of the Sauchik cars from back in the day. Door closed, door open, you can see the door slides back against the body. And it's just interesting to actually see the old piece of literature reproduced. On the bottom of the page, we have a copy of a two-door sedan, but the thing we're really interested in is looking at this drawing right here. That drawing correctly illustrates how the front seat is split in a combination coupe or a two-door sedan, how the seat goes forward and sort of bends inward at the same time, giving somebody the ability to get in the back seat. Do you really believe a factory that actually built seats like that, had them available, had the rear quarters of the car already stamped, do you actually believe that they would have taken a four-door sedan, chopped the top off of it, used the short doors so you had to climb over the seats to get in the rear? No. Nobody in their right mind could believe they built the convertible that way. Again, the green car is beautiful, but it's not a factory prototype. Here we are with the Graham four-door sedan from 1939 that we own. As the camera comes in, we're going to show you what the width of this door is using a tape measure. If you look at the width of the door, about 35 and 3 eighths at the most, that's the width of that door. Now having shown you the width of the door, we're going to open the door and we're going to look at the seat. The seat is adjustable right here. There's a little fore and aft travel, but even if this were all the way forward, this seat back is still going to be where the pillar is. The net result is you'd have to climb over this seat to get in the back seat if you got in from the front door. The other reality is, is this is a non-folding seat. Let's say we had a folding seat. We make the seat fold forward. Do you really think that somebody is going to want to pass through a little area like this crawling over a seat to get in the back seat? No, they wouldn't. So Graham could not possibly have used a four-door sedan 
to create a prototype convertible. Now let's go look at the combination coupe. Here we are with our Graham combination coupe. If we take the tape measure and apply it here, we're at 45 and one quarter inches in length on that door. 45 and one quarter inches. Now when we open a combination coupe door, you'll notice not only is it long like we said, but as you look at the front seat, you can notice that you can actually see that the front seat is forward of the door opening. We can also actually move the seat and show you how easy it would be to get into the back seat of this car. Here you see how the seat folds forward in the combination coupe. Now would you believe that Graham used a sedan or would they have used the combination coupe as they showed you in the 1940 brochure, that was the car they were intending to use. You can get into the back seat with this seat the way it is designed and this door length. They would never have used the four-door sedan. They had all the stampings for this car, all the dies, all the equipment to make this. This is the car they would have made a convertible coupe out of if they were making a prototype. This beautiful green car is in fact absolutely positively not a Graham factory prototype.